Hi friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a really fun yoga flow for this uh, full moon in December. It's called the cold moon. It's a great time to reflect on your past year and kind of find new footsteps forward into the next year. So we're going to be channeling that energy and kind of warming the body really, really quickly and then cooling down and finding some introspection afterwards. So um, after this flow, we're going to be doing some journaling and I will be doing a three card pull for you guys to kind of give you some guidance as you move through this flow and afterwards. You don't really need any props for the flow unless you use props regularly in your class like blocks or a bolster to help you modify for the poses to help them fit your body. So go ahead and grab your mat, any props that you might need, and I'll see you in a second. All right, welcome to this full moon flow for December for the cold moon. We're gonna go ahead and start our practice by finding an easy seat, legs crossed, nice long spine, maybe a bolster under the hips to support, and start to close your eyes and kind of find your breath, slow down the breathing, <clears throat> And on each exhale, notice the shoulders relaxing down the spine. And maybe on each inhale, grow a little bit taller. Setting an intention for your practice. Thinking of something that you want to bring into the new year and something that you want to release from this past year. I'm just meditating on those as we go through this practice today. So take a moment to think of something that you can release and something you can hold on to. Good, start to flutter the eyes open. Bring the hands out to the sides and where your easy seat is, we're gonna inhale both arms up to the sky. Interlace the fingers and leave the pointer fingers out. Good. Start to bring the belly button to the spine, really engage the core, lengthen through the spine. And then on your next exhale, we're gonna drop over to the right side, just kind of opening up the side ribs making a little moon shape with the body. Good, and release to center. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fall to the other side. Really relaxing those shoulders, but keeping them nice and engaged. Good, and release to center. Arms go out to the side. All the way down, and just kind of give yourself some shoulder rolls. Hands come to the knees, and we're gonna start to do some seated cat cows. So start to cat your spine towards the back, arch backwards. And then using your hands, start to push the chest forward, arch the chest back as you puff the chest forward, open through the throat. Good, exhale, release to that cat pose pushing the spine towards the back of the mat. Inhale, push the chest forward, open through the front body, open the throat. Good, exhale, release. Keep going, using your breath to kind of guide you through these spinal movements. You can maybe find some wiggles left to right.
and start to kind of barrel roll the ribs in big circles. Using the hands to kind of anchor yourself as you move through the side ribs and the upper body, upper spine. Good. Go, away. Go ahead and find yourself back to a neutral spine. And now we're gonna roll onto our shins and find a tabletop position. Maybe placing a blanket under the knees might feel good here. We're just gonna do a few more cat cows here. So inhaling, pushing the chest forward, tipping the tailbone up. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, arch the spine up to the sky. Inhale, puff the chest forward, open through the throat, tip the tailbone up, cow pose. Exhale, arch the spine up to the sky, cat pose. Good. Go ahead and find one more of each at your own pace. And then come to a neutral spine. Begin to walk the hands forward. Curl the toes under. Find a downward facing dog. Just begin to pedal the feet out here. Kind of open through the spine. On your next inhale, look towards the hands. Exhale, slowly walk the feet forward, finding a forward fold. And just kind of shake yourself left to right, release the upper body. We're gonna do a couple sun salutations just to warm the body up. So start to push the feet into the mat, bend through the knees, roll yourself up. Arms go out to the side, all the way up, extend a mountain. Exhale, release yourself to a forward fold, hinging at the hips. Good, hands come to the mat. Inhale, hands come to shins, nice long spine. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Hands float to the mat, feet go back, find a plank pose. Pushing the hands into the mat, really pulling the energy from the ground. Start to float your knees to the mat. Hug the elbows close to the body. Drop yourself all the way down on an exhale. <sighs> Inhale, cobra. Open the chest up to the sky. Push the feet into the mat. Good. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hips go up to the sky. Take a few deep breaths. Good, start to slowly walk your feet forward. Find a forward fold. Let the body hang heavy. Maybe bend really deep into the knees. Inhale, halfway lift, hands on shins. Nice, long spine. Exhale, fold. Push the feet into the mat, bend the knees, roll yourself up. Arms go all the way up to the sky, extend the mountain. Lengthen through the spine. And on your next exhale, hinge at the hips, belly button to spine, fold forward. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift, hands on shins, nice long spine. Exhale, fold. <sighs> hands float to the mat, feet go back, find a plank pose. Pausing for a moment, pulling the energy from the earth. Making a nice long line from the crown of the head to the feet. Float the knees down to the mat. Hug the elbows close to the body. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Puffing the chest forward. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up to the sky. Three-legged dog. Exhale, bring it through to meet the hands. Low lunge. Good. You might want to have blocks next to the front feet if that feels good, keeping your spine nice and long. Push both feet into the mat, rise up, high lunge, arms go up. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, open up, warrior two. Really pushing both feet into the mat, growing tall through the hips. 
Good, start to straighten that front leg. Both feet face one side of the mat, and then the feet are gonna be pointed towards the front corners of that side of the mat. So we're gonna be doing a goddess pose sequence. Feet are a little bit wider than hip distance. I'm gonna grow tall through the hips on an, in on an inhale, and exhale, sit down into a nice squat. Kind of putting your hands on the hips, maybe swaying left to right, keeping the spine nice and tall, letting the heat build in the legs. And then inhale the arms up to the sky. Maybe find some bounces here. And then we're gonna be doing a fun little dynamic movement flow. So using the hands to kind of keep your balance, you're gonna bring the body over to the left side. And then you're just going to squeeze the right glute to kick the right leg up and then drop yourself back into that goddess squat. <sighs> Using the breath, we're going to flow back and forth. Using the arms to kind of help you keep your balance. And core and legs are very active here and engaged. Feet are pushing into the mat. Okay? So we're going to go to the other side. Bring your weight over to the right leg. Pop that leg. <sighs> you can do whatever you want with the hands. And drop back to goddess. Inhale, exhale, inhale, drop down. Good, keep going side to side. Maybe playing with your arms and legs as you go. Not really worrying about what this looks like, just how it feels. Really expanding the body, releasing up explosively. And moving side to side as fast or as slow as you'd like. Good. Go ahead and find one more on each side. And then land in your goddess squat. Sinking into those hips, growing tall. Good. Arms go out to the side. Find a warrior two towards the front of the mat. So bending through that right knee. Good. Cartwheel those hands down to the mat. Squeeze the right foot to meet the left and find your flow or just meet me in a down dog. So exhaling chaturanga. Inhaling cobra. And exhale downward facing dog. Curling the toes under, lifting the hips to the sky. And take a moment to find a few breaths. Good. On your next inhale, float the left leg up to the sky, three legged dog. Exhale, bring your hand, foot through to meet your hands. A little lunge. Again, you might want blocks to frame this front foot to help you kind of maintain your balance, keep your spine nice and long. And then pushing both feet into the mat, rise up. Hands go up, high lunge. So left leg is in the front, open up, warrior two. Bending through that left knee. Arms are nice and strong, shoulders relaxed. Good, start to straighten that leg, that front leg. Both feet face one side of the mat. We're going back to that goddess squat. So, feet are a little bit wider than hip distance. Toes are pointed towards the side corners. Hands come to heart centers down into your goddess squat. So sitting into the legs, tall through the, through the spine. You're not really falling forward. You're not like this, falling backwards. Nice and stacked line here. Hands at heart center. So another little fun dynamic movements section here. Start to lay, uh, sorry, straighten the legs. Arms go up towards the sky. Kind of float yourself left to right, dance around the arms. Opening the side ribs. Good, and then sit down into your goddess. Finding an expression of the arms that feels good for you. 
today. Good, push your feet into the mat, straighten the legs, dance the arms around. Maybe shift the weight left to right. Good, and then sit into your goddess squat. Arms can go wherever feels good. I'm gonna put mine on my belly this time. Good, straighten the legs, arms go up. Find a nice little dancey expression. Good, and now we're just gonna keep going back and forth intuitively, however feels best for you. So sit into that goddess squat. You can also just stay here and build that strength and that heat in the legs. Or you can just move back and forth between straightening, finding a little dance, and sitting down into your goddess pose. So go ahead and take a few moments to breathe and move, listen to the music, listen to your breath. Just move between these two postures, straight leg goddess and seated goddess. Playing with your expression of the pose. Good, go ahead and find one more little bit of movement. And then find that warrior two towards the front of your mat. So left knee is bent, right leg back, arms up, look towards the front hand, relax the shoulders, grow tall through the spine, good. Take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, float the hands to the mat, shoot the left leg back to meet the right, and fly, find a flow or just meet me in a down dog. Exhaling chaturanga. Inhaling cobra, open through the chest. And exhale, downward facing dog. Good, pedaling the feet out here. Taking a deep breath in. On your next inhale, float the right leg up to the sky. Exhale, drive that knee through to meet the hands. We're finding a pigeon pose here. So, pigeon pose, you can place a block under the right hip to kind of prop the hip up a bit if you'd like. The goal here is basically just to feel an opening in the side hip of the right leg and the hip flexor of the left leg. So, go ahead and situate yourself so that your knee is comfortable, your hips feel a nice opening, and your body just feels like it's ready to release to the mat. Once you've found that, both hands push into the mat and kind of puff the chest forward. Start to close the eyes as you bring yourself over that front knee, sleep into the pigeon pose. And I want you to bring your awareness back to that intention you set at the beginning of the practice. This time I just want you to focus on what you are releasing from this year. And for this pigeon pose series, just meditate on those thoughts, feelings, events, whatever it is, and just release it out onto your mat as you find your breath.
Good. Wherever you're at, start to bring the hands under the shoulders. Peel the chest off the knee. Kind of puff it forward. Open through the throat. Good. And we're going to release the three-legged dog. So you're going to push your hands into the mat. Curl the left toes under. Lift the hips up. And then shoot that right leg all the way up to three-legged dog. Good. Release the right foot to the mat. Downward facing dog. Good. On your next inhale, float the left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. And drive that knee through to the hands. Pigeon pose. So again, you can place a block right here underneath that left hip, that bent, bent knee hip. If you're feeling like you're just like really hurts to try and get down to the mat or just not comfortable here, the block will definitely help you. <clears throat> so finding a nice, comfortable pigeon pose that you feel like you can hold for a bit and release yourself to the mat. So pushing the hands into the mat, puff the chest forward. And then start to fold yourself over that knee, closing the eyes, and just finding the breath. And now on this side, I want you to bring your awareness back to that concept of release, of letting go, and what you're releasing from this year as you breathe and relax in your pigeon pose. Good, start to bring the hands under the shoulders. Peel the chest off that knee. Puff the chest forward. We're gonna release to a three-legged dog. So push the hands into the mat. Curl the right toes under, lift the hips up. Shoot that left leg all the way up, three-legged dog. And then bring that left foot down to meet the mat. Find a downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, release the knees to the mat. Finding a child's pose, so knees go wide, big toes touch. Arms go above the head, forehead comes to the mat. And just start to slow the breath. Releasing the body, letting yourself relax into this pose. And now I want you to bring your awareness your attention, your thoughts, to that concept of bringing something in, embracing something in the new year. Maybe it's just a thought or a feeling or a concept or something that's changing. What are you bringing in today? Just maybe close the eyes, slow the breath, and focus on that concept for the next few moments in your child's pose.
good. Wherever you're at, start to make your way to your back. Just laying on the back. Palms of the feet come to the mat. Knees are bent. Just start to windshield wipe the knees left to right. Kind of releasing that lower back. Then start to bring the knees into the chest, grabbing onto both knees with the hands, and just continuing to rock left to right, if that feels good in your body. Giving yourself a little hug, feeling that compression in the hips. And then gently letting both knees fall to one side, doesn't really matter which side. Arms go out to a T. Just start to close the eyes. Slow the breath. And let your mat hold you in this twist for a couple moments. Start to bring the knees back towards center, grabbing onto them with both hands. Give yourself a little hug, rocking left to right, and then letting both knees fall over to the other side. Arms go out to a twist, or sorry, out to a T as you relax into this twist. Just starting to close the eyes, letting your mat hold you. Just finding a few moments of breath peace and stillness in this twist. Start to bring both knees back towards center, grabbing onto them with both hands and squeezing, giving yourself that hug, rocking left to right, releasing the lower back. And then when you're ready, no rush, releasing both legs long and preparing yourself for Shavasana. So both legs long, palms can be on the belly, they can be facing up to the sides. Or palms can be down, arms can be a little bit wider. So find a nice shavasana that fits your body, maybe a bolster under the knees, a blanket over you if you get colds, 
Or sometimes a nice blanket under the head or a roll, a neck roll under the neck feels really good. Once you've found a Shavasana that fits your body, and fits your body today, maybe it's different from other days. Start to close the eyes and slow the breath. Making the inhales just a little bit longer. Feeling the belly rise and fall and the ribs open and contract. Now on each exhale, I want you to really squeeze every bit of breath out of your body. So try to make your exhale as long as you possibly can, releasing everything out, kind of like you're wringing a sponge, but it's your lungs. So taking your next inhale, and then exhale everything out. And do that for your next few breaths. Good, and then just kind of release the breath to normal breathing, whatever feels good for you right now. We'll do a quick scan of the body, just releasing and relaxing yourself into your mat. And then I'll leave you to a few minutes of silence to close this practice. So relaxing the full body, starting at the toes and the feet. Relaxing the ankles and the calves. Softening the kneecaps and the thighs. Releasing the hips to the mat. Letting the belly be soft and open as it helps you breathe. Opening the heart space. Relaxing the shoulders into the mat. The arms are nice and weightless. The hands soft. Opening the throat. Relaxing the jaw. Softening the cheeks. Relaxing the eyelids, unfurrowing the brow and releasing the forehead. And then finally releasing the whole body to the mat as you drift off for a few moments of quiet Shavasana. Enjoy.
Begin to gently wiggle the fingers and toes. Just kind of signaling to your body it's time to wake up. And then when you feel ready, finding some bigger motions in the body, maybe stretching the arms above the head and lengthening the body long. And then find your way to one side of the body, rolling to one side, just pausing for a moment. Just thanking yourself for taking time for this practice today. And maybe pausing for just a few breaths to think about what you're releasing from this year and what you're embracing for next year. And when you're ready, absolutely no rush. Using both hands, push yourself up to find an easy seat with me. Legs crossed. Nice long spine. Bringing hands to heart center. Thank you so much for joining me in this practice today. Thank you for following me. Thank you for trying this class. And I will see you next time. Now, if you'd like to complete this practice here, you absolutely can, but you could also join me for a three card pull to kind of give us an insight into what this full moon is trying to tell us and some journaling. So stick around if you want to join for that. If not, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi friends, welcome back to the rest of this video. We're going to be doing some journaling and a three card full moon oracle deck pull with me to kind of get some messages from the universe from the higher power whatever you believe in is going to be sending us some messages at a, as a group if you're joining me for this video um so we'll start off with that card pull so we're going to be using the herbal astrology oracle deck um, i just bought this it's a brand new deck brand new product I'm really connected just because astrology and herbalism are two of my biggest passions next to yoga and I had no idea that herbs had like a connection to the planets and they have like all sorts of complicated histories behind them so I am still getting to know this deck but so far I've just felt really really connected to it and really called to share its messages um so yeah Let's see, so we're gonna ask it three questions. Yeah, let's start off by just taking a deep breath and kind of coming to our center, closing our eyes, just making ourselves comfortable. So the first question I'm gonna ask the deck is, what truths need to be illuminated during this full moon? What truths need to be illuminated during this full moon? All right, so I pulled Echinacea, which says destiny. So first off, just reading this card and looking at it, I feel like we're going to be getting karma cycles are ending, um, fate is coming, uh, we're going to be fortunate in this next month. It feels like things are ending, which is very fitting for a full moon for the last um, month of the year. Um Maybe this energy is moving on or changing something. Um, echinacea is very like stimulating to the immune system and um, I feel like many cultures have used it to help heal sicknesses. So maybe we're healing and we're moving on and our body is becoming more resilient. So that is a great message to start off with, with what truths need to be illuminated, that things are coming to an end we're um, finishing a karmic cycle or just moving on from certain things in our lives. Whether that resonates with you or not, there's still a good message to be pulled here from Echinacea. I'm going to look in the little book and read the guidance section of Echinacea. So, 
It says guidance, the snake eating its tail. The Ouroboros is the wheel of change, resembling the cycles of life and death. The sun and moon orbit and spin the wheel of change, representing our earthly domain. The echinacea sprouting in the center represents evolutionary consciousness, unbound by the confines of destiny. Like the wheel of fortune, this card may signal a twist of fate, a time where something in life shifts us and reorients us elsewhere, Echinacea has shown up in your cards today to remind you that the universe is always in motion and nothing is by accident. The key to see through the cycles of destiny is to remain centered and fluid, flowing with the course of life. The elusive, elusive judgments of good and bad only limits the vision of the great understanding. Step back and observe the great vision at play and be unbound by the passing influences. So yeah, kind of like I said, things are changing. Things are moving and just kind of surrendering and riding those waves of change. All right, so let's pull another card. Next card is how can we release what's not serving us during this full moon? How can we release what is not serving us this full moon? Okay. That one jumped right out at us. It was Rose Love. Look at that beautiful card. Wow. Okay, so Rose, love, the first thing that pops into my head, so how can we release what's not serving us? By leading with love, starting with love, either love for ourselves, love for the others in the situations that you're thinking of, or just like trying to take your first step with love and compassion and moving through your life, making your decisions this next month, just using your heart. Maybe not your mind as much, maybe it's time to look into your heart space and move more intuitively and guided by the heart. I love that. Okay. <laughs> um, and then the last question is just a general message for us this month. What do we need to hear? What is coming? What is the message from this full moon? What is the message? Ooh. Okay. We got Valyrian, look how cool that is. And the theme is acceptance. So Valyrian acceptance. Um, so the theme of this month, kind of like we talked about in the first card is things are, be, things are gonna be changing the wheel of life, um, fate, things are closing, things are moving, lead with love, move with love. And accept what's coming to you. Accept the things you're being gi being given. The things that are maybe even being taken away. Accept them. Move with them through love. Um, acceptance is a really great tool to help us kind of um, move through our emotions about things. And find a way to connect with maybe the lesson that's there. Um... So let me find Valerian and just read the quick. Um, quick little message about it. If I can get the freaking page open. All right. So guidance. Valerian supports us by widening our trigger points and helping us to zoom out of a situation that might be overloading you with anxiety or stress. Remember, go easy on yourself. Don't push yourself too hard to meet goals. Valerian remedies the internal parts of ourselves that can embody mouse energy when you're overly analytical and judgmental in high trigger mode. The message here is to take measure. Although your foundation can be established with great order, there is a certain amount of flow needed in order to enjoy creativity and growth. Don't exhaust yourself in the details. Embrace your imperfections. So basically, yeah, kind of like what we talked about, Valerian Root is very calming. It's in a lot of sleepy time teas. It's one of my favorite roots for anxiety. Um, just very, very calming herb. So it makes sense with that, that herb to kind of step away from our anxious racing mind and move into our heart space and accept the things that we are being given, accept what's happening. Stop trying to race yourself through it, right? Kind of what the second card says is lead with love. Um, 
things are going to be changing. Things are moving. Lead with love. Accept them. And just kind of observe. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this month is observe. And things are going to be moving and changing, which is always what happens at the end of the year, right? <laughs> All right. So go ahead and pause this the video if you'd like. And you can journal about what I've just pulled for you, anything, any thoughts that came up or any like aha moments that you might have heard from the things I said. Um, pause the video and then we will be right back with one more journal prompt. All right, welcome back. Thank you for taking the time to journal. So our last little section. So I just want you guys to write out... Um, your feelings, your thoughts, and maybe even a few manifestations that you're feeling for this month and maybe for the new year. So maybe a few goals. It doesn't have to be like anything crazy. A few manifestations, so very specific concepts that you want to see come to fruition in your life. And um, any emotions you might be feeling right now. The fact that this year is almost over is insane to me. Um, but yeah. Just kind of reflect on this last year and make some manifestations and goals. And yeah, you could set a timer for like three to five minutes and just free write. Or you could be more structured and kind of list them and details with them if you'd like. And go ahead and pause this video. And when you're done, I'm just going to say a few more words about this full moon and I'll see you then. All right. Thank you so much for joining me on this lovely full moon class. Um, I'm hoping to do another one next month for January's full moon. It'll kind of be themed around that moon's energy. Um, I really, really enjoyed creating this for you guys, and I enjoyed doing this card pull and the journaling, and I hope that I will see you guys again next month. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, comment if you want me to keep doing this, and don't forget to subscribe if you like this content, and I will see you guys for the next class. Bye, friends.